Hola mi gente, ¿cómo están? Mi nombre es Alba Mal, me pueden decir Alba, el canal se llama Seriela, estamos aquí para hablar de libros, algunos de ellos en español, desde Puerto Rico. Hello, my name is Alba you may call me Alba. The channel name is Seriela, and we're here to talk about books, and some of them in Spanish from Puerto Rico. And today, instead of Friday Reads, I will follow Sean the Book Maniac's example and do a book tag. And I've been tagged twice. Thank you uh, for this original uh, book tag called the Self-Aware Readers Tag, uh, originated by Courtney Ferreter. Thank you, Courtney, for tagging me. And then I got tagged again by Kim at the middle of the book March. Finally learned the name, Kim. Yes. Uh, I am going to wait with bated breath for Sean uh, to make his uh, book tag called uh, "Blissfully the Blissfully Unaware Reader's Book Tag. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I have no idea uh, where Courtney Ferreter gets the idea that she can tag me for a self-aware reader. <laughs> That's no longer a goal of mine. Uh, okay, the thanks anyway for the tag, Courtney. Um, let's go to the questions right off. You know my phone will turn off and surprise us at any time. Number one, what most draws you into a novel, a story, or makes you want to keep reading? Plot, character, writing style, atmosphere, or something else? For me, it is usually the plot. Uh, I want to know what's happening. For example, uh, not many, not very many characters here in the known world uh, were sympathetic to me, uh, but I wanted to know what was happening. And as uh, I kept wanting to know what was going to happen in the known world, I was taken aback by the writing style, which was wonderful, and all the things that I were what I was learning uh, in this. But then. There were times, right, the same thing happened with uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, I wanted to know what was happening, but I loved the character of uh, Edmond Dantes. Yeah, I really loved him, and I wanted to know what happened to him. Yeah, but then again, there are books like Visitation by Jenny Erpenbeck, which uh, had a very, very, uh, evocative, atmospheric way of writing that just transported me to that particular uh, part of Germany which we, she was describing and at that particular moment uh, in history, those moments in history that she so magnificently uh, describes. So it all depends on the book. But another thing that I really, really enjoy in a book is humor. As for example, the first few pages of this book, Signing in Puerto Rican by uh, Andres Torres, a hearing son and his deaf family. <gasps> Those first few pages were just hilarious and gave me the motivation to continue uh, reading uh, this wonderful book. And then La Guaracha del Macho Camacho uh, by Luis Rafael Sanchez is a parody of uh, Puerto Rico in the 1970s and 1980s. Just hilarious throughout. And then what happened in the aftermath of the writing of this short novel by Luis Lopez Nieves, Seva, was also just it had me laughing so, so hard what happened at the, at the reception of this, uh, of this piece. And then uh, the satire here in El Corazón de Voltaires by Luis Lopez Nieves. Oh, the emails that they were sending each other, the different bureaucrats, uh, and why they couldn't get their job done. <laughs> to discover whether that uh, Voltaire's heart was really Voltaire's heart. Uh, just funny, funny. And look what just came. Look what just arrived. Uh, Dumpty 
The Age of Trump in Verse by John Lithgow. And the other one, the companion, Trumpty Dumpty Wanted a Crown, Verses for a Despotic Age by John Lithgow. Yeah, and if you haven't seen uh, those videos, I will link the playlist down below so that you can have a laugh also. So, number two, what is a convention or trope that will immediately turn you off in your reading experience with a novel or a story? And in novels, in Spanish, it's a, a flowery, ivory tower, uh, overly pedantic type of language, uh, which just completely, completely turns me off. Um, and it easily lends itself to cliches. For example, here in La Llamarada, Enrique La Guerre, uh, the language here uh, did not age well for me, right? So yeah, no, I, I cannot deal with that kind of language. And I saw it again in the memories, uh, the memoir of Oscar Collazo, which will be a DNF, which well, I will explain uh, at a, in another video. Yeah, the language here was it's a complete turn off. Cannot deal. Uh, number three. What most appeals to you when reading nonfiction and makes you want to keep reading? Well, usually the topic, because I want to learn about uh, the different topics, excuse me. There are topics that I want to learn about. For example, uh, I wanted to know more about Puerto Rico as a young woman when I read Puerto Rico, Una Interpretación Histórico Social, and this has left its mark on me since that time. Manuel Maldonado Venice is the first book in which I became aware of Puerto Rico's colonial condition. And then I wanted to know about Mariana Bracetti, who is uh, our version of Betty Ross, who uh, so our, sewed our first flag, La de Lares. I wanted to know about the gag law, La Mordaza, which was uh, legislated during the rise of El Partido Popular. Yeah, that was an eye-opener. I wanted to know more about Pedro Albizu Campo, the president of the Nationalist Party. I wanted to know. I wanted to know about the workers from West Indies, the black laborers who constructed the Panama Canal. I wanted to know about the annexation of Hawaii uh, through the eyes, the hilarious eyes, of Sarah Vowell in Unfamiliar Fishes in 1898, about the time that Puerto Rico was invaded and Cuba and the Philippines. I wanted to know about the Great Migration. Oh, this is a wonderful book, very well written and uh, researched. I wanted to know what uh, this click title, <laughs> clickbait of a title, uh, had to say about uh, this period in history uh, after the invasion. Phone turned off. Yeah, gave me a chance to, to get some very important props here. Yeah, we'll probably be seeing this for a very, very long time. Uh, so yeah, the, I'm, usually, uh, I'm usually more interested in uh, topics when I search out uh, nonfiction books. Number four, what is a convention or trope in nonfiction that will turn you off in your reading experience? And those are two things that will turn me off. One is the novelization of uh, nonfiction. For example, what happened with, uh, that happened with Alex Haley's, the autobiography of Malcolm X, as told to Alex Haley. Yeah, right here. As told to Alex Haley, I thought that I heard uh, his voice, his uh, novelist voice distinctly, especially in the melodramatic parts, 
of, of this autobiography, as told to Alex Haley. And then uh, another example of novelization is here with uh, the memoir of Oscar Collazo, who was a nationalist who attacked uh, Blair House uh, in 1950 and uh, is one of the most commemorated uh, political prisoners that we have had in Puerto Rican history. And the novelization of this memoir is just driving me up the wall. Another thing, another pet peeve that I have with nonfiction especially is uh, editing. Poor editing or lack of editing, for example, La Gran Ausente, La Maestra Celestina Cordero Molina by Sul Marie Alverio Ramos is a very, very important book and a very, very important topic in which she mentions uh, how uh, Celestina Cordero, who was the sister of Rafael Cordero, who is a renowned uh, uh, figure, uh, a precursor of, of public education. He gave free public education uh, to everybody in El Viejo San Juan in the 19th century, and she has been eliminated from our history books until recently. This is a very important thing uh, to know about our own history. Uh, however, this book ca could have done with some very, very uh, robust editing because there is a lot of repetition. And another important topic, a very important topic in the history of Puerto Rico is uh, the letter by Dr. Cornelius P. Rose in which he confesses that he has injected cancer cells into eight Puerto Ricans. Uh, in the letter he says, I have done my best to further the process of extermination, extermination of Puerto Ricans, uh, by killing off eight and transplanting cancer into several more. Okay, and this, uh, this caused a Fuhrer in 1932 when it was uh, discovered and there was an investigation uh, by the the research uh, cancer research institutes that uh, employed him and um, the Rockefeller uh, Association. This is an important book about that time and it could have done with some his, with some very good editing. And uh, the fact that it is an important book does not exempt it from being edited. It's just my opinion. Yeah, it, it just, you know, irks me no end. Because they're important topics. Number five, would you say you read more for pleasure and enjoyment or more to learn and exercise your brain. Well, the thing is that exercising my brain and learning gives me pleasure. I, it excites me to learn something new all the time, especially like, for example, when I learned about the Black Count. This is what led me to read uh, the Count of Monte Cristo, knowing that the Black Count depicted here uh, was the real Count of Monte Cristo and the father of Alexander Dumas and was raised in uh, the colony of San Domingue, which later became Haiti. I love that. And I, uh, I enjoy, was so excited to learn about Chinese history as a backdrop to how the Chinese arrived in different parts of the United States as indentured servants and how they arrived in Puerto Rico and how they constructed La Carretera Central, our mountain, our, our central mountain uh, road during the 19th century. Yeah, so that's the answer to number five. Uh, learning gives me pleasure. Number six, which type of books are you likely to rate more highly and enjoy more overall? Brain candy, the books for pleasure or enjoyment, or books uh, that give me brain protein? Well. I think I answered that in number five. Uh, I, I will always rate this book very, very highly as I will rate uh, uh, The Warmth of Other Suns and Evicted 
and uh, this one no friend but the mountains uh, they're uh, unforgettable reading experiences yeah Num that was number six number seven do you have a sense early on of whether or not the book you're reading will be a five-star read I don't rate my stars have you ever been surprised in this regard well I have to bring up the case of the natural way of things I had a sense that I was I had a sense that I was drawn to the topic of this this book from a negative review that um, Sean the Book Maniac and Heidi of My Reading Life gave after they had a buddy read of this book, The Natural Way of Things by the Australian author Charlotte Wood. There was something that uh, they mentioned in that negative review, their negative review, that spoke to me and told me that I might find something in this book that spoke to me and that is what happened it it didn't surprise me but uh, what I had expected uh, happened and I will link that video down below where I talk about this book and I review it yeah sometimes I'm surprised and sometimes I'm not Number eight, considering books that you've rated five stars in the past or, or that I've really loved, do you think that you would feel the same way about them now? Why or why not? No. Why not? Because I'm a different person. Uh, the example of that most recently is The Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison that we're reading along with Hannah of Hannah's books for the Toni Morrison read-along. Uh, I read this many decades ago when it first came out and had a euphoric literary experience like none that I've ever had before. It, it seemed to have come full circle in a, a very literary and emotional way for me and uh, I loved it. Was not the same experience now and not to say that I didn't enjoy the book. Uh, I probably got more out of it now than when I first read it. What I most remembered about Song of Solomon uh, from that first reading was my emotional response, was that euphoric feeling. Uh, this time I was more concentrated on the literary aspects of the novel and reading it uh, with, with a group was an entirely different experience. Okay, so that was uh, number eight. And number nine is to tag different people. I'm going to tag uh, Cynthia. I'm going to tag Cynthia of Book Whimsy. I'm going to tag Lisa of uh, Latinx Latina, I think it is. I'm going to tag J.D. Estrada of the channel J.D. Estrada. I'm going to uh, uh, tag Roz from South Africa. I will link all of these down uh, with their proper channel names down below. I'm going to tag Doris of Aldi Books. I'm going to tag Heidi of My Reading Life. I'm going to tag uh, Adriana uh, of uh, In Between the Pages. So there. Thanks again for tagging me, Courtney. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not such a self-aware reader, uh, but uh, I appreciate it. And to all the new subscribers, I appreciate your time. Keep on reading. And uh, nos vemos, mi gente. Cuídense mucho. Los quiero mucho. Adiós.